Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about stabilizers and interfacings. This is something that I think I had a lot of questions about over the years as I have worked through different projects. So if stabilizers and interfacings for projects that you work on has ever been something that you've had a question about, then stick around and let's talk through some of the different choices. Today I'm, I'm working on a By Annie bag, a duffel bag, and this bag calls for both foam interfacing as well as a stabilizer for the lining. So let's start by talking a little bit about the many different choices on the foam stabilizer that you use in this particular pattern. Okay, so the pattern calls for By Annie Soft and Stable Stabilizer. This is a stabilizer that is um, sold on her website. It's it's part of her brand. It's a great stabilizer. I've used it um, on uh, lots of different projects. So this is one of the choices that you can use. But if you don't have time or, or don't want to wait for an order to come from by Annie, there are several other choices for foam stabilizers. So let's look at a package that I've opened. This is Bozel NR Form Plus, which is also a foam stabilizer. And this is, I've taken this out of the package, this is what a foam stabilizer is. A foam stabilizer is something that will stand on its own. You can see that it, it stands up on its own, um, and yet it is something that most sewing machines can sew through. So you can attach this to a piece of cotton fabric and sew this into a bag, and your sewing machine should be able to get through this. So one of the choices is obviously the buy any. And it's a great choice and you can buy this on her website as well as I think it's on Amazon and several other places. This other choice is the Bozel brand um, NR Form Plus, which is the same type of stabilizer. Um, I consider them to be the same thickness with the same amount of stability. So these are two choices. Another choice is Pellon brand. Pellon sells a FF77 Flex Foam Sew-In Foam Interfacing. So this interface, and this is the difference between these two is that this is bought um, on, a, on a board so there's no folds or creases. This is bought in a package where it's folded and creased. And you can see from, from this package of a similar interfacing that the folding causes creases and these creases can be hard to get out. As a matter of fact, I have spent some time ironing on this particular piece already, trying to get these creases out. So for that reason, I tend not to buy the um, stabilizer already in a package like this. I prefer to buy my stabilizer on a roll so that there's no creases that I have to worry about ironing out or um, something that I can't get out when I'm working on my project. So these are three different types of foam interfacings and I've used all three and they all work really well. This is another, um, I wanted to kind of show something that's also called, I'm gonna turn around for the above camera. It's a project foam, it's multi-purpose, it's supportive foam, but this is half inch thick foam. And this foam, while it stands up, similar to this type of um, foam interfacing. This, because it is a half inch thick, this will be something that will be difficult to work with in the seam allowances of a bag specifically. So it's great option for some other types of projects, but not necessarily the best option for any kind of bag that you're doing. Options. There's several different brands for options. And the other option in this is you can buy the foam stabilizer that is um, fusible. You can buy fusible interfacing. The, the foam can be fusible. I don't use fusible interfacing personally because I find that if you fuse this to the fabric and then you try to sew the fabric into your project, most often you're sewing it inside out and then you're having to turn it right side out. You may even have to be birthing the bag if it's got a lining in it, and it you know, depending on the, the pattern that you're using. Um, I tend to do a lot of sew sweetness bags 
and those patterns typically have a birthing process. So a fusible foam fused to the fabric that you're using in the bag will often look wrinkled and crinkly when it's turned out right side out. So I don't tend to use fusible, but these, um, these foam stabilizers do come in fusible and I believe they come fusible on one side and not on the other or fusible on both sides. I'm not quite sure about that because I, I typically pass up on anything that's fusible. I see this question a lot on some of the discussion boards um, that I am a member of on Facebook and, and different places where folks are asking about fusible fleece. So the question is, can you use fusible fleece in place of fusible foam? Now you, you can, but the difference in the fleece is that fleece is thinner, it's thinner, and it's got more bend to it. So there's not as much stability in a fusible fleece as there is in a foam. So if you want a bag, say you're making a, a hobo type um, shoulder bag, and you want it to have that slouchy soft feel, then fusible fleece might be a good option for that. Or even um, sew-in fleece, you might want to use that. Um, but it'll give you a different texture than the foam will. The foam will give you a bag. Um, this is a good example. This is used with the foam. If I had used the fleece, this wouldn't stand up on its own. So um, this makes a good stand-up bag with good function. And I'll show you a piece of that. I brought this out because I'm making several sizes. This is an example of one of the pattern pieces that I have um, stitched the fabric to the foam. There's no, um, there's no iron, it's not fused, it's just sewn in. And you can see it's sewn into the seam allowances and my sewing machine handled that just fine. I stitched this together. So this is two thicknesses of foam with two thicknesses of fabric and that wasn't a problem. So I was able to do that. The thickness wasn't too thick, but it's, it's definitely standing up on its own. So I think it's a good choice for that type of bag but the fleece is a little bit softer. So I just wanted to kind of bring that out and show people because I see that question a lot where people are interested in knowing if they can use the fleece in place of the foam. And you can, but it'll give you a much different look. And this is Pellon 987F. So if usable fleece or fleece of some kind is more appropriate for your project, this is what you might be looking for when you go to the store. So let me push this out of the way and I'll push this out of the way. And then I'll talk about, since we're talking about bags today and we're talking about different types of interfacings or stabilizers, more specifically for bags, because that's the project I'm working on today. And when I was going through this and looking for the amount of foam that I needed for this particular project, and then I realized I had three or four different brands and kinds and I was going through which ones did I want to use, seeing the, um, the issues with the crinkling and the stuff that was in the prepackaged, I thought it might be something that would be helpful. So the other part of the bag is calling for um, a stabilizer to stabilize the lining. And I believe I have some of those, some pieces in here. So this is meant to be a lining to one of the bags that I'm making. So what I, did for this is, and, and for the linings and for this particular step, I do use a fusible, but for this one, I used Pellon SF101, which is a woven stabilizer. It feels like cotton fabric on the top and it has bumps on the bottom, which is the glue, the fusible glue part. So this is what I used on the linings and um, it gives nice, shape to the bag, but it's, um, it's not as thick as the foam. So you use the foam on the outer, um, the outer portion of the bag or the, the, the fabric that'll be on the outside of the bag, like this bag, we use foam on the outside. And then when it came to the lining on the inside, we use the SF 101 to give that, um, a little bit of, uh, 
firmness on the inside of the bag to the lining. So SF-101, it's fusible, um, it's woven, it's got a nice bit of body to it. You can see it makes the fabric stand up pretty well without being too bulky in the seam allowances. So that's an option. Another interfacing option is um, Pelon P44F. This is a fusible interfacing and this is an interfacing that I also use. I don't typically use this interfacing in bags, but what I do when I'm making um, t-shirt quilts and memory quilts, I will use this uh, interfacing to stabilize my cotton t-shirts. So if the t-shirt's a little bit of a heavier cotton type of t-shirt that I'm putting into a quilt, I will use the P44F because it's lightweight and the t-shirt already has a good amount of weight to it. So I just wanna stabilize it so it doesn't stretch during the construction process. So I'll use this P44F for that. But when I am doing a memory quilt and I'm working with a shirt that is got a lot of polyester to it, it's very um, lightweight, it's very, I call it slinky, then I will use the SF-101 on that to give it a nice um, stability and firmness in the t-shirt quilts that will um, combine well with the cotton shirts that might be in the quilt that I put this particular interfacing on. So those are a couple of the interfacings that I use on linings and of lines of bags, as well as when I'm making t-shirt quilts or memory quilts. So um, those are good choices for that. And again, these are both Pellon. The heavier one is SF-101 and the lighter weight is P44F. And um, if you have a Joann's in your area or you can order online, they have coupons for interfacings um, on a regular basis and, and you can often get this at half price. So these are two interfacings I use for those purposes. And the same with the Pellon, the foam. The Pellon brand is again, FS, I'll give you this one, FS77 Flex Foam Sew-In. This is uh, also a good choice and I find that when I use it, I, I personally, just me, um, like it as well as the Buying Any Soft and Stable. So I, I like both of these. Um, I believe the Pellon, I know the SF-101 comes in a black if you're working on um, really dark material. I think the foam only comes in this, this natural color, but the SF-101, I have seen that in black, um, but everything else I think comes in the natural color. So stay tuned for a video of the construction of this bag. I. When I started to construct this bag, I looked on the Biani site because typically with her patterns, in, in many cases, she also sells an add-on video showing how she makes the bag. This particular one didn't have a video online, so I went onto YouTube looking for a video um, showing how this is constructed and I didn't find anything. So um, stay tuned for a video as I go through the steps of making this bag from the beginning to the end. And also, Put in the comments your preference on these interfaces, if interfacings. If these are interfacings that you've used, I'd love to hear from you to see which ones you like best, which ones work best for you, or if you have other interfacings that you prefer to use that work better in, in projects such as um, making bags. So if this information helped, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified as we add other videos. Mm -hmm.